Hey, what's up, everybody? I just came across a, a cool quote, and it goes like this. You must value yourself to add value to yourself. It's a good one, right? And it's kind of like what I have talked about in the past with regard to people who I call nibblers. Nibblers, remember, those are the people who sign up for my MMT Trader Report, but they cancel simultaneously at the moment they are signing up. In other words, they don't, you know, they've already made up in their heads that they're not taking it. So, but they take it because they want to peek at it, but they've already decided they're not taking it at the moment they sign up. And uh, that kind of behavior speaks to a lack of self-worth. It speaks to somebody who uh, does not deem themselves worthy of a good thing, even to, to give it a chance, Okay. So that kind of ties in with that uh, quote that I, that I, that I just um, uh, offered you. And I'm not saying this because a nibbler came along. No, I just, I read the quote and it made me think, hey, you know, I, I have been talking about that kind of behavior. And so there it was embodied in that quote, in that quote. I want to talk about the stock market. And I think something that's very, um, uh, which this rally brings to light uh, you see, I never, when you talk about um, investor behavior, when you talk about mass behavior and the psychology of people and certainly the psychology of market participants and, you know, it's, it's a lot of what goes into what I do. And I've explained in the past how market participants are generally very, very ill-informed. They're basically guessing, they're panicky, they're very emotional. For me, it's always extremely easy to buy into market declines for a number of reasons. Number one, just the super macro reason is that, and I've explained this in the past, that the stock market is basically a growth function, all right? It reflects the growth of profits, the growth in the economy, and, you know, really the growth of people's inherent desire to do better in life, to just, you know, elevate their situation and to achieve more, to attain more. So that that's all it is. I mean, that's why the stock market over time, it always goes up. And that's the number one thing you should remember that. And it's the reason why in every single stock market downturn, you should always buy. And we don't know where the exact bottom is, but that that's not the point. We should not paralyze ourselves and I've been having some of these conversations with some of you, you know, don't get hung up on, on being super precise because we, we cannot know the exact bottom uh, when there's a sell-off or even when there's a sell-off in an individual stock or a currency. We, you know, we try to use all the information at hand, whatever that might be, market composition, volume spikes, uh, technical indicators, news items, whatever, uh, but it should not, that should not be your goal to be so super precise. Remember, I had a guy, I spoke about a guy here who quit my service saying my timing was bad. Meanwhile, I make money on every single trade that I do. So I, clearly that guy is not interested in making money. You know, I've always said the market trading exposes who you truly are. I mean, you, ha you can't say anything about the timing if you make money on every single trade. That's what it's all about, right? So the true motivation for that guy, it wasn't about making money. He did not want to invest in the mental game to ride through the difficulties and the tough spots. And no matter what approach you use, you're always going to have that. But now, contrast. So in a downturn, uh, you know, number one, I know from a very macro perspective, the, the stock market is a growth function. It's always going to go up. So you buy the downturns. But number two, the downturns really kind of uh, in one, you know, just in one shot, just bring out the, the fear and panic on the part of everybody. You know, all the rest of the people out there who basically are highly emotional and uninformed and all those people I referred to. So, you know, going against that is easy because it's, it's very, very crystal clear. You know, it's like that the proverbial uh, a thunderstorm on a hot summer day. It all gets, you know, they throw everything out, the, the throw the baby out with the bath, bath water all in one shot, all right? Now, the market rises. You know, sometimes I like to go opposite that, and I have been opposite that since probably November. I talked about how, um, 
in November, we started to see the fiscal flows go negative year over year. And I'm a, you know, that's my big thing is the fiscal flows. Now, uh, so I started to build a short S&P position probably uh, back in November. Still short in the S&P. Obviously, that's against me. And also, uh, the fiscal flows at the end of December flipped back to positive. So right now I am in a workout situation. But behind the fiscal flows, there are some other things that I have uh, been talking about. Number one is the very sharp deceleration in bank loans. And for me, that, that's a um, sort of a barometer on demand in the economy, right? I, I talked about this earlier. I said all banks want to make loans. That's their biggest asset. That's where they make their money. So the supply of loans is always there, but you know, it's it the demand side. I mean, people want to uh, people have to want to take on credit for that to happen. So when you see loan growth in a precipitous decline like what we have seen now since um basically starting in late August, and it's really accelerated now. Uh that is something that it says something to me. And now recently with the gasoline demand, which has just fallen off a cliff, and I sent a chart out uh, in an email to MMT Trader subscribers. And by the way, if you want to see that chart, more than happy to send it to you. Just uh, sign up for a 30-day uh, free trial of MMT Trader. Go to my uh, website, pitbulleconomics.com. And don't be a nibbler. Take it for the 30 days. I'll send you the, uh, you know, you get the report. I'll send you the email that I sent out earlier. You could download all the back issues. Now, on the flip side of buying in the crashes, when everybody panics and freaks out, you have these uh, periods of market expansion, market rise. And like I said, yes, the market does rise over time, but there are periods when the rise is unjustified, when you don't have the underlying fundamentals to really support that rise. And I think we are in that situation now. But you see how hard it is to sell into a rise as opposed to a to a fall. The rise, it, it, it evolves slowly. It's like this almost this sort of, um, you know, hypnotic thing that draws people in little by little and it progresses and it progresses and it progresses. And at each level, it looks like a sale, but it could continue to go. And it has been going. And at every level higher, it becomes more unjustified by the underlying fundamentals. But people are drawn into the story. People see the markets rise as something which will continue, which is sustainable, which is based on something which they probably can't even really put their finger on. Right now, it's the whole Trump thing. But I mean, Trump hasn't done anything. He said today, there's going to be a big league tax announcement. So we'll see what that is. But so far, he, you know, where's the infrastructure spending? Where's the tax cuts? Maybe, maybe he'll mention something about that. Um, where's the repeal and replace Obamacare? He's got guys like Mickey Mulvaney at uh, uh, his budget director. The guy's a super big time fiscal hawk, wants to cut everything, wants a balanced budget amendment, wants to go back on a gold standard. He's got guys like uh, Mike Price and Health and Human Services. Uh, not confirmed yet, I don't think. But that guy wants to cut Medicare. You got Paul Ryan in, in uh, the House. Big time wants this entitlement reform, right? That's code for cutting. So nothing has been done. You had a federal hiring freeze. Uh, but people buy into the story. And, it, you know, the market just keeps creeping higher, creeping higher, creeping higher. Uh, at, some t at some point, there's a catalyst that... that turns it around. But it goes to show you, it should be a lesson. You should never, ever be afraid to buy in on the crashes because you have, you know, a, a major macro thing always backing you up, which is the fact that the stock market is nothing more than a growth function. And second of all, you get that mass panic all at once, as opposed to this in the market rises. Why is it so hard to short the market? And it's kind of like a, you know, it's a hard thing to do. You have this constant story which pulls in people little by little and it keeps driving it up, driving it up, driving it up. And at some point, yeah, the thing goes through a correction. It has to. I never said the market goes straight up. There's always periods when it goes, you know, it goes down. But you have to be very wary about that. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. 
and I'm keeping an eye on everything going on, and I will keep you updated. Bye-bye.